The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Once again, it's open house here on your dial for mystery and suspense and the excitement of the unknown. They say, whom the gods would destroy, they first make mad. Yes, they do say that. But these days, it would be quite possible to take the opposing view. One could also say, whom the gods would preserve, they first make mad. More and more, we find our world dominated by the senseless, the irrational, the incongruous, the incredible. And if this is the way things are truly headed, perhaps a touch of madness may be absolutely necessary for survival. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I crashed in on you like this, sir. Oh, well, uh, I hope you're not injured. No, 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 I'm, I'm fine. You're playing? I'll examine it in the morning. Well, then you'll join us for dinner, won't you? Well, thank you. If you'd like to go to bed early, we have a room ready for your convenience. Well, you're very kind. Well, we don't usually have much here in the way of entertainment. We're so far away from everything. But if you care to stay up tonight, uh, you're very fortunate. Oh, really? Yes, you might enjoy it. Uh, enjoy what? Tonight's uh, entertainment. Oh, what is it? Uh, it might turn out to be a hanging... Our mystery drama, A Scaffold for Two, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars John Beale and Brett Morrison. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. written, where men are innocent, laws are unnecessary. Where men are corrupt, laws are useless. It stands to reason, therefore, that laws are intended for that great mass of us who are in the middle, neither completely innocent nor entirely free of corruption. It's a subtle philosophical point, and there are times when Charles Farnsworth would enjoy discussing it over a drink and a roaring fire. However, this is not one of those times. For the last two hours, Charles Farnsworth has been fighting for his life. His tiny single-engine plane is being buffeted without mercy by a ferocious thunderstorm. His radio has gone dead. His instruments are useless. He has been blown off his course. He has no idea of where he can be. And the needle of his gas gauge is hovering at empty. And now, suddenly as it erupted, the storm subsides. There is brilliant moonlight, a bright, twinkling star. And just below him, he can make out a long, gently rolling meadow. He has no choice. He directs the faltering flame downward. I'm all right. Uh, I guess everything's all right, but where am I? Easy, boy. Okay, now. All right. Who's that out there? Oh, sir, I, I need help. Come on, Alexander. Now, Cedar, be quiet. Quiet! Now, sir, 
Move this way. Very slowly. That's fine. I, uh, I assure you, sir, there, there's no need of that rifle. That's far enough. Now, sir, what are you doing on this island? Oh, is this an island? I, I didn't even know How'd that. How'd you get here? I was driven off course by the storm. What storm? Well, it ended a few miles north of here, or south of here, or even east or west. I, I couldn't tell you. I, I was forced down in a, in a meadow, but... Are you all right, sir? No, yeah, I, I'm fine. And your plane? It, it seems to be okay. I, I need gasoline. Are you, you alone? Well, yes, sir, all alone. I see. I, uh, I wonder if I may impose upon your hospitality. It's yours, sir. Well, thank you. Um, step this way, won't you? Uh, my name is Bennett, Franklin Bennett. Welcome to Bennett's Island. Uh, my name is Charles Farnsworth. Oh, you're just in time for dinner, Mr. Farnsworth. This is Mr. Farnsworth, who will spend the night with us. My daughter, Mayetta. How do you do? What is your sign, Mr. Farnsworth? Sign? Well, um, Taurus, I think. Mayetta. But it's vital, Father. How's a man to be saved if he's unaware of his son? <laughs> and uh, uh, this is my nephew, Conrad. How do you do, sir? Hello. Mr. Farnsworth was forced to land his plane in the South Meadow. I knew it. I could tell he had the earth sound. Um, May yes, that's enough. Conrad. Sir? Is there gasoline in the garage pump? It's full, sir. Good. In that case, we can have Mr. Farnsworth up and away tomorrow morning. May I just set another place at the table, please, for Mr. Farnsworth? Yes, Daddy. Conrad? You'll serve. Yes, Uncle Frank. Uh, mix yourself, whatever you like. Everything's on the side, boy. Excuse me. Frank Bennett here? Oh, uh, yes, Wayne. Yes, it's this evening, as we agreed. Midnight, officially. But get here before that. Good. I'll see you then. Well, you all right there, Mr. Farnsworth? Oh, yes, just fine. I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. Oh, for what, Mr. Bennett? Well, I can offer you dinner and a bed, but regrettably, I'll be unable to entertain you. Oh, that's quite all right. No, no, it's not, not all right. I, I realize I shall be remiss in my duties as a host. But I have a previous engagement, a matter of great importance. Well, I, uh, I, I hope I won't be in the way. Oh, no, not at all, sir. You won't be in the way at all. Well, if everyone's had enough, uh, Conrad may have to clear the table. Charles Farnsworth. Where have I heard that name before? Oh, I'm an attorney. Oh, yes, you, you're that Farnsworth. You're the lawyer that gets all those guilty people acquitted. <laughs> oh, that's impossible. Impossible? If a person is acquitted, it's proof that he's innocent. Oh, you know what I mean. No, I'm afraid I don't. Why, you usually get these people rabble-rousers, mostly. They, they go around, they commit murder. And how they, do we know that? Because because we know it. We just know it. It's a, it's a matter of pure common sense. Well, guilt or innocence is a matter of law. Uh, most of these people you defend are against the law. Most of them are out to overthrow the government. Anyway, they're... They're dirty. They're unkempt. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, I would. Mr. Bennett, I defend a great many people. Some of them happen to be associated with unpopular causes. <laughs> and some of them, I admit, are personally quite unappealing. But, uh, but what would you have? Everyone's entitled to counsel. I know. I know. It's just that I hate to see people get away with murder. But they don't get away with it. If a judge and a jury acquits them, that means they didn't commit murder. That's what's wrong with the system. Well, you could also say that's what's right with the system. Well, 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 I'm doing something wrong right now. I'm having an argument. A serious argument with a man who's a guest under my roof. I apologize. Oh, so please, I, I don't feel in the well, least... I'm a deep believer in the law, Mr. Farnsworth. And to me... The most sacred of all laws is hospitality. When a man is your guest, 
In no way should he be made to feel uncomfortable or under a strain. I... Forgive me for what I said to you before. No, I felt in no way insulted. That's very kind of you. Conrad, Mayetta, come in here, please. Mr. Farnsworth, I, I'll have to excuse myself for the night. I, I hope you understand. Yes, of course. Con Conrad, my guests are beginning to arrive. Show them into the library, will you? Yes, sir. And Mayetta, conduct Mr. Farnsworth to the guest suite. Now, Mr. Farnsworth, you must excuse me. I hope to see you at breakfast in the morning. Good night, sir. Good night. You want some more coffee? Oh, no, no, thank you. When I asked you your sign, I didn't mean the signs they have in the Zodiac, you know? I think so. There are the four basic signs, and they are earth, air, fire, water. Oh. Is this some uh, new kind of science? Oh, no. It's an old kind of religion. I see. It's mine. I'm the head priestess. Are you? Yes. I'm maybe the only one. You see, I don't know anyone else who's a member. Oh. No. Most of the folks we have around here are Methodists. We also have some Congregationalists and some Catholics and some Jews. But I can't find anyone who's a member of EWAF. EWAF? Yes. The four elements. Earth, water, air, and fire. So far, all we've got is Conrad and me. Well, you can never tell. Maybe uh, there will be more one day. Oh, it's very nice of you to say that. Most people just laugh at me. I'm sure they don't mean any harm. I don't mind. You're a very nice person. You're not at all like most of the people who come to see Daddy. Why do you say that? Because... You are a perfect example of the balanced EWAF. I see now you don't have any sign. You have all four of them. Oh, is, uh, is that good? Oh, that's perfect. You're in heavenly balance. Your fire and water, your earth and air, they don't fight each other. They work together in harmony. Didn't anyone ever tell you that before? No. No, not that I can recall. Well, as I was saying, most of the folks who come to see Daddy are unbalanced. They're usually too much of one thing. Now, Daddy himself, he's too much fire. And poor cousin Conrad, he's mostly earth. Earth? Yes. You know, it's like he's just there. Well, Daddy said to show you to the guest suite. Yes, I, uh, I believe so. Now? I suppose now's as good a time as any, you uh... Your father, as I understand, has other guests. Yes. If we weren't on the island, you could go to a movie in town. I think I'll, uh, I'll just turn in. All right. Come with me. Well, this is quite a place you have here. Daddy built it for Mother. Daddy fought in France during the war, and that's where he met Mother. She was French, you know. And he built her this chateau. That's what they call them in France. I can see. It's lovely. This is your suite. <laughs> I can only say it, it, it's magnificent. You'll find everything you need. You have your private bath through there, pajamas and a robe in the closet. Thank you very much, Mayetta. That's all right. I so rarely meet a person who's in full balance. Good night. Look, if you're not sleepy, you could come with me later and watch. That is, if you'll promise to be very quiet. Oh? Um, what is there to watch? Well, I'm not supposed to see it either. I'm not even supposed to know about it. Know about what? Why, the hanging. The what? The hanging. You know, when they hang a person. We're going to have one here, tonight. <laughs> Just like that. How would you like to blunder into this kind of lodging for the night? Charles Farnsworth looks at Mayetta. She's young, but not a child. It's true she babbles a bit and has several, uh, well, uh, offbeat ideas. But she seems sane enough. What's this about a hanging? 
Well, you'll just have to wait until I return shortly with Act Two. What we consider solid reality is usually, on close examination, a very thin crust. Civilization, rules, laws. We think these are the powerful defenses that protect our lives from anarchy. We rarely consider how quickly, how easily, all the laws and rules can suddenly be suspended. Now, uh, just a minute, Mayetta. Do you mean to tell me somebody's going to be hanged here? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. But, but who? How? Why? Well, who, that I don't know yet. But how? Well, they use a rope, you know, and a scaffold. But, but why? Well, they're holding a trial. Daddy summoned all those people here for a trial. What, what kind of a trial? I'm not sure I know. But the idea of a trial is to hang someone. No, no, the idea of a trial is to find out... But they've if... already got the scaffold built. How do you know? Because I've seen it. You've seen it? Yes. But how can they hold a trial? This, this isn't a court of law. That's Daddy's business. I would never question him about anything like that. Mayetta, do you realize what you're telling me? What did I tell you? About the hanging. <gasps> I wasn't supposed to say anything about that. But I... And since I wasn't supposed to say it, I didn't say it. Mayetta, please, now listen. And since I didn't say it, then you don't know anything about it. But I do. And since you don't know anything about it, then it's not going to happen. But you did tell me. That's what EWAF is truly about. What you don't know about does not exist. But you specifically said someone is going to be hanged here tonight. I said it before I realized I shouldn't have said it. So, so no... I will unsay it, and it won't happen. <sighs> Mietta, this is... Uh, I, I don't know what to think. It... That's why I like you, Mr. Farnsworth. You don't know what to think. Other people, unbalanced people, they know what to think. And they think I'm crazy, but I'm not. Ah, all squared away, I see. Is everything satisfactory? Uh, uh yes, yes, I, uh... I've been having a most intriguing conversation with your daughter. Oh? Well, she, uh, she takes after her mother. Her mother was French. And they, uh, they like to talk in riddles, you know. Mm, do they? Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Bennett, I, uh, I feel I must discuss this matter with you. Oh? What matter? Mr. Bennett, do you intend to hang somebody tonight? I realize, as I, as I said it, just how that must sound, but I... Why do you ask? Well, why is unimportant? May I have your answer? Oh, whatever could have given you such an idea? Well, your... Your daughter mentioned it. Oh. Also, uh, Mayetta said we're going to hang someone tonight. Yes, sir. Well, she thinks so. May I ask why? I I love my daughter, Mr. Farnsworth, but I, I'm not blind to what is obvious to everyone else. But what is obvious? Oh, you've seen it yourself. She, she's not like everyone else. You're not like everyone else, are you, Mayetta, honey? No, Daddy. And you... See things and hear things and believe things that, uh, well, that other folks don't. Now, isn't that true, darling? Yes, Daddy. Yes. You just run along to bed now. Yes, Daddy. Good night, Mr. Farnsworth. Good night. She, she has a problem, Mr. Farnsworth. She was born that way. I, I uh, I, I'm sorry. And I, uh, I realize I'm in a very embarrassing position. Well, let's, let's say no more about it. Well, you're probably wondering now what this gathering is about. Well, we're having a reunion tonight. My old army outfit. Each year, we, we become fewer and fewer. Well, I hope you have a good time. Oh, we will. But, sir, you, uh, you spoke of the law of hospitality. All the obligations are not centered on the host... 
The guest is also obliged to make things easy. Well, thank you. All right, I'll see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. Good night. I was exhausted. It had been quite a day. I thought I'd sleep the moment my head touched the pillow, but for some reason I was wide awake. I kept wondering why sleep was eluding me so completely. But of course I knew. I knew there was something mysterious going on in this house. Something was wrong. Maybe it wasn't as deadly as Mayer had claimed. But I felt certain it wasn't as innocent as her father had asserted. And I also knew that I wasn't going to rest until I found out. And so I... I fought it no longer. I got out of bed and dressed myself. And I walked quietly to the door. And I turned the handle. And that's when I discovered that it was locked. Locked from the outside. I walked to the window. And I discovered that I couldn't open it. It was a large casement window made up of many small panes. And as I examined them closely, I discovered that they were made of very heavy, leaded, apparently unbreakable glass. And now I knew with crystal clarity, I was a prisoner. In the distance, I could hear the sound of approaching cars and men's voices. Something was about to happen. But if it were only an army reunion, why was I locked in this room? And then I heard it. A key was being inserted in the lock. And I could hear it turn. And the door opened slowly. Was someone coming after me? Who? And for what reason? Barnesworth. Me yet? You just have to help. What is it? Why have I been locked in here? They're going to have a hanging. But I thought you said... That's before I knew who it was going to be. Well, who is it going to be? Cousin Conrad. Conrad? But but why? Because they're holding a trial for him. But I have to keep asking why. Because they held one over at Maple City six months ago. Conrad was tried? What for? Murder. Murder? Whom did he kill? Cousin Bertram. And you see, the jury said he was innocent. Well, then what's this trial about? Daddy didn't like the verdict, so he's holding a trial to get a different one. We have to do something, but what? Well, I was thinking you could take Cousin Conrad away from here. How? Huh? In your airplane. Take off at night from that field? They'll hang him. Gas. I need gas. We've got plenty of gasoline in the garage. Where's Conrad? He's waiting for the trial to start. Then we'd better hurry. Conrad? Does Uncle Frank want me to come to the library now? Uh, he said he'd send for me. No, it's me and Mr. Farnsworth. Conrad, what's supposed to be happening here tonight? I'm to be tried for murder. But I understand you, you've already stood trial in a court of law. Yes, sir, but... Uncle Frank doesn't think it was a fair trial. Well, you were acquitted. I know, sir, but... Well, he doesn't think the people of the state got a fair trial. But I... There's something to what he says. What are you saying, Conrad? Well, sir, I had a very smart lawyer. But the lawyer for the state, he really wasn't much good. Well, are you innocent? Well, I... Well, are you or aren't you? Did you kill him or didn't you? I wanted to kill him. And that's the worst kind of imbalance, but well, that's really the worst kind of all. That's right, because that's when all of your signs are just completely out of control. No, but there, there's a difference between wanting to kill and killing. Is there? I wanted him dead. I wished him dead, and he died. All right, all right. Why did you wish him dead? Well, sir, because Uncle Frank wanted him to marry Cousin Mayetta. Oh, and you were jealous? Oh, no. No, no, jealousy. That, no, that's not it. That, that, that's against our religion. Well, what were you? 
Sir, I knew he would be mean to her. Just tell me this. How did Cousin Bertram die? Poison. He was poisoned. And uh, if I may maintain my sanity, I would assume that you were accused of the crime. Now, is that it? Yes. How was he poisoned? Well, someone put poison into his iced tea. You see, we were all sitting around drinking iced tea. Who is all? Let's see, me, Mayetta, Cousin Bertram, and Uncle Frank. We'd better hurry. They'll be looking for Cousin Conrad soon. I'll go see if the coast is clear. Well, you see, sir, Cousin Bertram was sipping on his drink. And suddenly, suddenly he fell forward dead. And they accused you of putting the poison in the drink. Well, did you? Probably. Oh, please, Conrad, I have to know. Well, you if... see, sir, I did direct poison thoughts against but him. You can't kill a man with poison thoughts. Now, that's not true. You and me, what, what are we? We better get out of here. But, <laughs> I'll take my punishment. But Cousin Mayetta, well, she says she doesn't like the way people look after they've been hanged, sir. They're still in the library. Come. No, wait, wait. Just, just one minute. What is it, Mr. Farnsworth? Look, you realized what you two have said to me about a hanging. It's... Well, it's unbelievable. But that doesn't mean that it isn't true, sir. Do you want proof? Well, it would help. We're headed that way anyhow. It's just in back of the garage. What is... Proof. Daddy's friends were here this afternoon. They put it together. I can't believe it's a scaffold. Yes, sir. See, there's the platform. And you walk up those steps. And they've already got the rope hanging from that crossbar. I heard Daddy say that was made out of mahogany. And you stand on a trap door. No, that's enough. That's enough. Now, hurry. Let's get the gasoline. I'm going to fly you out of here, Conrad. One moment, please, Mr. Farrell. Daddy. My associate's here, and I... As you can see, we're armed. Mr. Bennett, I intend to take Conrad to my plane. Now, if you want to stop me, you'll have to shoot. That's exactly what I'm prepared to do, Mr. Farnsworth. Well, something has got to give. We already know enough about both men to realize that each is a person to be taken seriously. What we have here is the old story about the irresistible force and the immovable object. I shall return shortly with Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago News Radio 78. Right now, on remote Bennett's Island, we are having what can be considered a confrontation. On one side, we have 12 men with guns. On the other, we have two men and a young lady who are completely unarmed. At first glance, the advantage would seem to be with the group that has the weapons. And a very grim and determined looking bunch they are too. But there are times when you may need more than a gun to win a fight. Mr. Farnsworth? I said I would shoot you down if you took one step toward your airplane. Yes, I heard you. But before you take that first step forward, Mr. Farnsworth... Yes? You have to realize that you're committing each of us to a position he doesn't want to be in. Well, what do you suggest? Let's discuss it. You intend to hold a lynching. I don't see what's negotiable. It's a trial. You can't do it. This is to be a real trial. What he had before was just a farce. The law of this country has clear procedures for trials. You're obviously interfering with his civil rights. We have a federal involvement. Tell me more. Each one of you who is involved in this activity will be arrested. All right, I listen to you. Now, you listen to me. You leave here. You tell that story. And who do you think is going to believe you? Who? Oh, I see. Yes. I'm the biggest taxpayer in the county. I own a mill that's the largest employer in Maple City. Yes? Well, I hope that you're beginning to get the picture. The people here with me 
Oh, upstanding, law-abiding citizens? Law-abiding? Law-abiding. We're interested in seeing that the laws aren't twisted and perverted. We want laws that punish the guilty. We'll deny every word you say. Upstanding, law-abiding, respectable citizens and willing to commit perjury. Uh, who's going to believe Is who? this what you wanted to discuss? Now, you, you give me your word of honor, Farnsworth. Your oath as a gentleman. That you'll never mention any of this to a living soul. But I thought you didn't have to worry about all that. Well, why take chances? Give me your word. And you can gas up and fly out of here. Alone? Alone. You know I can't do that. Oh. Then I'm afraid you can't leave this island. Wayne. Bob. Oh. A couple of you. Get some rope and tie him up. Mr. Farnsworth. Well? I want you to understand my position. Yes, I understand it. I just don't agree. With well, it's, it's a, a little complicated. This, uh, this whole business has become more complicated than I guess most of us bargained for. What business? The redressers of injustice. The redressers of injustice? That's the name of our organization. We felt, a group of us felt, that there were people who were getting away with murder. And so we decided... You decided to take the law into your own hands? Yes. Where it would be safe. Where it would be honored. Mr. Bennett, we really have nothing to discuss. No, no, just a minute. Tell me why you want to lynch your nephew, Conrad. I, I said you didn't understand, and obviously you don't. I love that boy. <laughs> And you have a remarkable way of showing it. Listen, we formed this organization, as I said. And this is the second time we've met. Oh. So that scaffold has been used before. Yes, it has. You remember reading about a man who murdered a farmer and his wife and their four children? Just murdered them for no reason. You remember that, don't yes, you? Yes, yes, I think so. Well, everybody knew he did it. He was seen there. He even bragged about it later on. And he was tried. And he was freed, finally. And you know why? No. Because of some legal mumbo-jumbo. Oh, come, Mr. Bennett, I'm sure you can do better than that. It all had to do with the fact that he wasn't arrested properly. That his confession hadn't been obtained properly. Nonsense like that. Well, it's hardly nonsense. He killed six people in cold blood. And a court of law said, go free. And therefore you took the law into your own yes, hands. Yes, we did. And before you say another word... Let me ask you if you remember that man's name. No. It was Wayne. George Wayne. And his cousin, Gordon Wayne, is a member of this committee. That should prove something. Well, it proves that some of the greatest crimes can be committed in the name of sincerity. Mr. Farnsworth, I... I need your help. My help? Yes. Let, let me tell you the situation here. You see, we started something that looked very good. In the beginning, you, you know. Yes, yes, I know. But now, some of the gentlemen, well, I guess it's like everything else. People lose interest or change their minds, and then there's you. Me? Yes, well, what to do about you? Unless we kill you. And there's not an awful lot of stomach for that. We're not just murderers, you know. <laughs> well, you do have a good opinion of yourselves. We're law-abiding citizens, and we want to protect... Yes, I know. You said it so often, you actually believe it. Now, the reason we're trying my nephew, Conrad... Yes? Well, I admit that there was no love lost between Conrad and Bertram. And Conrad could have done it. Actually, he had the motive. They were both in love with my daughter, Mayetta. And... Conrad was going to lose out. You're sure of this? She seems quite fond of him. Well, I had decided in Bertram's favor, and that was the end of that. Well, why had you favored Bertram? You mean... You mean it's not obvious? How could Conrad take care of her? He's as... Well, I may just as well say it. He's as crazy as she is. But Bertram was sane. Practical. True, he did have a heart condition, but with care, you can live with those things forever. Well, Conrad may have had a motive, but that doesn't mean he was guilty. Well, well what happened was, he was acquitted at the trial. And uh, a lot of people kicked up a fuss. They, they uh, Yes? 
Well, they said it was my wealth, my influence that got him off. <laughs> Pardon me if I uh, enjoy this irony. Well, was your wealth and influence a factor? Never. But you know how it is. When a rich man's relative beats a murder charge, people talk. There's a discontent. Yes, I see. And I, I had helped organize this, uh, this organization. Oh, yes, yes. The uh, redressers of injustice. Yes, the, the redressers held a meeting and demanded action. Now, what, what, what could I say? It would look as if I were trying to make an exception out of Conrad. And Gordon Wayne, he said that if, if the redressers could try his cousin, they could try my nephew. Well, you're in quite a position there. I'll tell you, I wish I were out of it. Finished and done with the whole thing. And that's sort of most of the others. But, but Gordon Wayne demands that if... Now, well, I, I can see his point. And so you'll sacrifice Conrad. Oh, no. He's going to get a fair trial. Why do you say that? Because you're going to represent him. But I can't. I, I can't legitimize a lynching session. Please, Mr. Farnsworth. Don't give me all that law. Just find us a way out. No. No, I don't see why Conrad should have a lawyer. Just a minute, Wayne. Just a minute. Now, you wait a minute. I thought the reason this committee was to get together was to get away from lawyers and their shenanigans. A man's entitled to counsel. I object to that. All right, we'll put it to a vote. All in favor of Conrad's having counsel, raise your hands. All opposed? The vote's nine to three in favor, counting mine. All right, why don't we proceed? Who wants to speak against Conrad? What's to speak about? And we know Conrad hated Bertram. Did you, Conrad? Boy, it was my one weakness, sir. Now, the idea of losing Mayetta drove him wild. Didn't it, Conrad? Yes. Okay, now, Conrad, did you or did you not poison Bertram's drink? I did, sir. <laughs> well, then, why isn't that the whole ball of wax? Uh, just a moment. Here comes the lawyers to steal it now. What do you mean by poison? I, I poisoned him. Do you mean you poisoned him with a drug or a chemical of some sort? I understand a heavy dose of poison was found in his system. Did you administer it? Yes, sir. How? Does that matter for crying out loud the man admits he did it? How, Conrad? Well, my poison thoughts toward him, sir. It, it, it turned into actual poison. Did you at any time place into his glass a pill, a powder, a liquid, a substance of any sort? Did you? Uh, no. I, I didn't do that. How did the poison get into Bertram's glass? Conrad, put it there. How? When? Where? Now, where did the iced tea come from? The kitchen. Bertram said, I'd like some iced tea. We were all sitting out on the patio. Yes, and I said, uh, I'll tell the cook to make some. And Bertram said, nobody makes better iced tea than I do. And he went inside. And a couple of minutes later... He called from Mayetta to come in and help him serve. heard all this at the trial. But it is important, Mr. Wayne. So Mayetta went inside and came back carrying the tray. She set it down, and uh, Bertram set a glass in front of everyone's place. And then what happened? Well, oh, oh, there was a sound of an explosion from the rear of the house. But we ran back to see what it was. Who ran back? All of us. In any particular order? Uh, I remember. Uncle Frank... First. Yes. And then Conrad, and then Bertram and Mayer. And what was the explosion? Oh, the cook's little boy. He, he'd found a firecracker left over from the 4th of July. I see. And then what did everybody do? Well, we all went back to the patio. And everyone picked up his glass and started to drink. And then, in a few minutes, Bertram just keeled over. Then how did the poison get into Bertram's glass? Conrad, put it there. He admitted it. But when? And how did he have a chance? He couldn't do it in the kitchen. Only Bertram and Mayetta were there. He couldn't have done it on the patio because someone would have seen him. He did it when they went out to investigate the noise. How? He was second man out. Bertram and Mayetta were still on the patio. When they came back. Did you all come back together? Yes, yes, we did. 
This is the same kind of hocus pocus the lawyer pulled at the trial. Now, Conrad admitted it. He can admit anything he pleases. It doesn't work unless and until we can show he put the poison in the glass. The thing was put into the drink after the glasses were set out. No, it wasn't. Mayetta, what do you say? Yes, Mayetta? Well, you all should have asked me. Nobody ever asked me before. As I came into the kitchen, I saw Cousin Bertram place a pill into one of the glasses. A pill? Well, he always took pills for his heart. I didn't think anything of it. But then we set the glasses down. I saw him put the one with the pill in it in front of Cousin Conrad. Uh-oh, I thought. He made a mistake. So I just put the glass with the pill in it back in front of his chair. You changed the glasses? Oh, yes. I was going to call it to his attention, but everybody started to run to the back of the house, so I just changed him myself. But, Mayetta, that was not a pill. That was the poison that killed him. Oh, no. No, Conrad is right. The poison that killed him was Conrad's mean and unbalanced thoughts. But Conrad has atoned. He's balanced now. Mayetta, why would Bertram want to kill Conrad? Oh, Bertram. Bertram was unbalanced. Everyone knew that. He was so angry because I told him I could never marry him as long as Conrad was alive. What? We love each other so much. Gentlemen, the defense rests. <laughs> It's tempting to consider people like Mayetta and Conrad as being somewhat out of focus. But how clear, how sharp are your motivations and mine? I may tell you that the redressers of injustice have been disbanded. That is, I think they have been. The weirdest of urges and desires and motivations can still make any number of people go bump in the night. Be sure of nothing, except that I shall be back in a few moments. As they say, you take the law in your own hands only to manhandle it. We hope Mr. Bennett has learned his lesson, as have Mr. Wayne and the rest of the redressers of injustice. Mr. Farnsworth won what he considers his most important case, but it's a secret between him and us, since he doesn't talk about it in public. You'll learn a great many more fascinating secrets when you visit with us again. Our cast included John Beale, Brett Morrison, Denise Alexander, and Casey Kasem. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. Tenants just don't stay here very long, do they? How long has it been since the last tenant, Mrs. Broly? How long? Well, more than a year. I see. <laughs> what happened to the last tenant? Dead. Found dead in the garden. She'd been strangled. And that's why you weren't able to rent the place? No. The tenant before... Found dead? Strangled? Yes. I... Oh, my dear child, I only pretended to be angry with you. And demanded you to leave to... To save your life. After letting me rent the place. I hope the haunting was over, but... I see now it isn't... Morley's ghost will haunt this place, haunt me till the moment I die. You must go in the morning. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams...
CBS News is next on WBBM Chicago.